but I have never spoken about this in an interview. When my daughter was six, she began to have verbal tics and muscle tics that got so violent, she could not hold her head still. And the dreaded diagnosis came out of Tourette syndrome. All the doctors could offer were sedatives because they did not have an answer for why this was happening. I knew that there was something out of balance. I started on a quest to research and research and research. I spent hours and hours reading. That's when I first came across Carolyn Dean, who wrote the groundbreaking book on magnesium. There was a connection between magnesium deficiency and foods that were magnesium antagonists, wheat, specifically gluten, and dairy. So we embarked on this, uh, started with a very low dose, dissolved in boiling water. We took away all wheat, all gluten, and all dairy. And within four weeks, Tourette syndrome was gone, completely gone. You talked a bit about uh, magnesium um, earlier and, and just in terms of like evangelizing and helping. I understand that someone very close to you, uh, you were able to help through your research skills that you've cultivated. Uh, would you be able to speak a little bit about that journey of um, metabolic health and wellness that you were able to um, embark on with respect to Tourette's? I certainly can. <laughs> I have um, never, this will be my 13th podcast interview, but I have never spoken about this in an interview and I would, I would be glad to. I have posted about it on Twitter and um, have been able to come alongside quite a few families that have reached out to me for help, um, which has been an absolute honor. When my daughter was six, 20 years ago, I, of course, was in the throes of the deepest, darkest torment of this mental illness. She was healthy up until the point where she was about six. And over the course of about three months, she began to have verbal tics and muscle tics that got so violent she could not hold her head still. And it was awful to watch. It was devastating to have her cry most of the day, and especially at night, trying to go to sleep. The muscle twitches are so exhausting. She was so tired at the end of the day. It's such a, a, a feeling of twitching and cramping. And then you're exuding energy trying to stop yourself from doing it so that other people don't look at you funny because you can't control them. She was exhausted. We got to a point where... I was taking her to doctors, pediatrician first, and then a neurologist. And the dreaded diagnosis came out of Tourette syndrome. And they, they give you this devastating diagnosis with no hope that it is permanent that she will have to learn how to live her life this way. She will have to learn how to shun other people's dirty looks. One of the things that she could not control was she rolled her eyes all the time. And when other people would see her do this, they thought she was being disrespectful. They thought she was being mean to them she suffered greatly socially from this 
that's all the doctors could offer were sedatives to try to make her muscles tired because they did not have an answer for why this was happening. They tried to tell me it was genetic. They tried to tell me she was born this way. They, they threw everything at it that they could possibly throw at it to try to get me to accept this. And I was not going to accept that. Not when she was fine for six years with no hint of this anywhere. And within three months, she was debilitated. I knew that there was something out of balance. I had no idea what it was, but I knew that there had to be something out of balance. At that point in our life, because I was already not eating meat or fat, a lot of what I was cooking for the family was also carb-based for them. We ate a lot of pasta, a lot of, they did, I cooked for them. I didn't eat it, but what I cooked was a lot of pasta, a lot of bread, a lot of noodles, a lot of starches, potatoes, um, even packaged foods, crackers, little fishy crackers. I mean, all those things that you feed to a five, six year old as snacks, a lot of, you know, a lot of crackers and <laughs> um, those sorts of things. I, um, I knew that, that there had to be something wrong. So I started on a quest to research and research and research. I spent hours and hours reading. We had just gotten our first computer and um, it was dial up. <laughs> so you know, you, you hear the little ringing in the background while I was trying to connect and I would stay up many hours of the night searching and searching and searching. I came across, um, that's when I first came across Carolyn Dean, who wrote the groundbreaking book on magnesium. At that time, it was fairly new. And as I read articles about her connection and ordered her book to read it and, and start highlighting in the book, there was a section in there talking about um, muscle cramping that we all know, you know, when our minerals are out of balance and we have a Charlie horse, we have a leg cramp, we have a toe cramp, we have a hand cramp, and we need more magnesium, we need more salt, we need more potassium, we need more water. We know that. She was in this one section of the book talking about that it could actually affect the face. And I was like, wow, really? You know, but that I've never heard that before. So as I plowed through her book and continued my search online, there was a, a set of blog posts. This was, you know, before Facebook, before Instagram, there was a set of parents on a blog post that was kind of an offshoot of Carolyn Dean's book and website. And there was a set of parents that were talking about Tourette's and uncontrollable facial muscle twitches and what they were finding that could work and they would try to go back to their doctors and share what was helping and they would be shut down. They would be told that that's ridiculous. So I did enough research to understand that a body and brain that's deficient, actually clinically deficient in magnesium, even if your blood test for magnesium shows that it's within normal range because your blood will tightly control. You can have all kinds of magnesium deficiency symptoms in your body, but your blood marker will still show that it's within normal ranges. I coupled that information with several of these families that mentioned that there was 
a connection between magnesium deficiency and foods that were magnesium antagonists. And those foods were wheat, specifically gluten, and dairy. My daughter lived on pasta and dairy, <laughs> pasta and cheese. She, she would go weeks with eating nothing else. And I thought that that was eating healthy. You know, I, I, was, I was cooking this for her. It was, you know, hard dairy cheese. It was, you know, good milk. It was whole wheat pasta that I thought was better than white pasta, which actually is worse in, in the terms of anti-nutrients. So I, I used that knowledge from that couple of set of parents. I needed to verify that. I needed to understand that this was really scientific, that this wasn't just some parent saying that, that wheat and dairy were leaching magnesium out of their child system. So I started looking through nutrition journals online and uh, ordering them to borrow them from the library. And I found all the evidence that I needed. The, the components in both of them, the phytic acid, the leptins, the oxalates, you know, in, in certain foods, which is high in wheat, and the components in dairy with the imbalance of too much calcium that would then take out the magnesium. So I, I had found a lot of evidence on my own through nutritional journals that this actually was right. This was correct. So as, as a six-year-old, we talked about this. I always talked to her and not at her and included her in everything because I was, I was raising a future adult. I wasn't, I wasn't coddling a, a child. <laughs> I wanted her to grow up to be strong um, in mind and in body. But this was going to be, this was going to be rough to explain to a six-year-old that, that in order for you to feel better, we're going to need to take your favorite foods, what you literally live on. But, you know, she doesn't eat anything else. We're going to have to, we're going to have to eliminate those. And, and you're going to need to take magnesium to offset this deficiency. At that point in her life, she couldn't swallow pills. And a couple of these families were using a magnesium citrate powder from a company called Natural Vitality, Calm. And so I thought that that was the way to go. Um, she had also had uh, lifelong issues with constipation, which I now know was another feature of magnesium deficiency. I didn't know it then, but I came to quickly realize that that was another thing that she was, that was another telltale sign that she was magnesium deficient. So we embarked on this. Um, I ordered the palm powder and uh, started with a very low dose dissolved in boiling water that she drank at nighttime to get the benefits of relaxing her facial muscles while she slept. And we took away all wheat, all gluten, and all dairy. And within four weeks, Tourette syndrome was gone completely gone, just like these families on this blog post had said. And I was floored. I was amazed and floored and thankful, but also angry. <laughs> angry again at another set of feeling medicalized with no hope when it was nutrition again that made the healing possible. She is now just turned 27, married with a child of her own, 
And the life that she has, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, would not look like what it looks like if she had been and stayed that six-year-old girl that couldn't function. She would not have the life that she has now. She um, does well with adding wheat and dairy back in now. So she's not only healed to the point of not having symptoms, but she it has healed and healed that deficiency so much with daily magnesium because she now also takes magnesium three and eight and glycinate along with some of the calm powder to have um, even more brain healing effects from those two great forms. And she can eat dairy and wheat and to a certain level and, and have no problems at all. She, um, She's living in freedom. She's happy and healthy. And I think of the thousands of sufferers out there that are living their entire lives whenever they get diagnosed, whether it be as a child or as an adult. And it breaks my heart. Absolutely breaks my heart that they could be better if doctors could see past profit and look at people.